This is a video on how to do an Electrum transaction. Open Electrum and I'm going to create a new wallet. But I'm not going to create, restore one of mine, I'm just going to take a, a random wallet from the blockchain. So this is mempool space and uh, look at the last block and actually I'll show you what happens when we take a big wallet, let's take this address from a miner. And I'm going to import this address. I won't be able to spend from it, unfortunately. And have a look at it. Paste it in. Um, and this is connected to a my node. And you can see it doesn't work it's freaking out and that's because this wallet this address has got thousands of transactions and the my node isn't able to cope so let's take a more regular looking wallet maybe this one copy this address sorry if this is your address whoever's out there watching Take a peek inside. I'm going to make, whoops, make a new one. And this time we can connect. And this person has got five Bitcoin. Nice. And I want. Your uh, Electrum wallet may not show an, this address tab here. What you have to do is go to Tools, so View, and make sure, you, make sure you toggle it to On, and you can also toggle the coins. So we'll do that. And so you can see, uh, why no coins? Not sure why. Probably because this is a address-only type of wallet. No, it's because their balance is zero. It's spent and it's unconfirmed. There you go. So that's why we don't see the coins. This uh, this won't do. I have to do, find one with a non-zero balance. So close that. Let's try again. And this one is received some. Let's take this one. Copy. Ah, there's dots. That's better. And 84 Bitcoin, very nice. In one address, not so good. Um, all right, so eight transactions. If we look at the coins, we've got three UTXOs coming into this wallet, and let's now spend it. I'll show you how to do that. So instead of just going to send and putting an address and choosing an amount first, it's a good idea to, to select which coin you want to spend. So let's spend this one. Right click, and we put spend. And now only this balance is available for spending. Then we can go to send and we need to put an address. Who are we paying? Uh, let's just pay another random person. Let's pay this address. Copy. And so what you do when you're paying someone, you put their address here and you put the amount. So we can spend up to 59. Then later we're going to choose a mining fee, and this will drop if you increase the mining fee. That happens automatically. Or you can say, let's spend an exact amount. Let's spend 1.0. No, let's do 6.15. And we'll pay that address. So this will come up, and it's a good idea to go to the advanced 
um, options so you can see what's going on. So I'll click that. And this is a window of a transaction. It's a good idea to get familiar with this. In the top section here, these are the inputs, the coins that are going into the transaction. Uh, this is the transaction ID and this of the UTXO that's coming in. And this is the address it's in. When it's highlighted green, it means that it's part of your wallet. And so what's happening here, this is the input and this is the output. And we're paying 6.15 to this address, the receiver. And that coin, which is 59.1435 in size, must be split into two pieces. One that goes to the receiver and one that goes back to yourself. And because this particular uh, wallet has only got one address, the change goes back to the original address in green. But if you had a, a um, HD wallet, you'll have lots of addresses, and Electrum will just pick one of the change addresses, which is normally highlighted as yellow. So when, you wanna, um, when, you've, when you've when you done this, just check all the addresses are right, then select your fee. And if you're very patient, scroll this all the way down to a target fee of one or you can manually type it in sometimes i'll just go 1.2 just to just to skip the queue of everyone who puts in one sat per byte and then it automatically calculates the uh, amount and what i haven't done is i don't like merely sat so i'm going to change it to bitcoin that makes more sense to me um, and, right. So, 0 0.0017, that doesn't sound right, should have gone too much, that's better, to refresh, 0 0.000, anyway, 142 sats. So then when you're happy with that, you click finalize, this doesn't pay, just, just sort of fixes the amounts. And then you can do a number of things. If this is a wallet which has a private key, you can sign it. After you sign it, then you can broadcast it. Unless it's a multi-signature wallet, in which case up here, instead of saying unsigned, it will say partially signed, one of three, or something like that. When it's, when it's fully signed, it'll just say signed, and only then can you broadcast it. You can also uh, remove, not sorry, you can um, export this transaction and send it to another computer or another wallet, another device by clicking export. And you can do export to file and then you can save this file. Save it to the desktop as a partially signed transaction. Now. No, here's the here's the transaction. Nothing in here is sensitive. This is eventually going to be broadcast to the network. There's no private keys, just the addresses. So if you give this to someone, the only information you're giving up is your address and if they know you, your identity. So then they can look up um, your balance in this address, for example. But you can't. This is this is something you can share to in a multi-party, uh, multi-signature setup, or for coin joins. Various things you can do. You can send it to your cold card wallet, have the cold card wallet sign it, and then the cold card wallet puts it back to your computer via an SD card, and then you you open the transaction and sign it, and then broadcast it from here. So the key in the cold card has never touched your computer. That's the purpose of it. So that's, that's enough for this video.